All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I feel like I say this every single time, but uh, it's true again. So I'm going to say it again. I'm super excited to bring you today's video. Um, today, I have the intense privilege of introducing you to a very good friend of mine, um, a coworker and uh, someone that I've both flown and written with um, sitting over there. <laughs> It's, it's, I always do that because it's reversed or whatever. But yeah, yeah. sitting over there uh, is uh, Dave Shady Shadoin. Um, Shady, welcome to KC Zell's Writer Life. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I feel like I've, uh, I feel like I got welcomed into that a uh, couple years ago, though. So, oh, yeah, we're going to talk just, about that. Yeah. <laughs> we're for sure going to talk about that. <laughs> um, so, um, so, yeah, so uh, before we get to that, um, let's start by why don't you tell why don't you tell the people how uh, how you and I met? How did we get to know one another? Well, all right. So this starts in my mind ten years ago, even though uh -huh. you don't remember it. No, I don't. <laughs> because you, you had just gotten back from uh, a deployment, I believe, and you were spinning back up on the Huey, and I went on a night flight, and you weren't. No, you weren't I had Alicia. That's what it was. You had Alicia. Yeah, okay. I come, you were I just coming back. back. Yeah, you were just coming back. Um, and you wrote in the back, and you gave me nothing but crap about the way <laughs> I flew that night. And you were like, "Let me jump up in the seat and prove you wrong." And you're like, "I haven't, I haven't been flying nights and for I don't know how many years or how many months now." It just made me like absolutely hate how terrible I was at flying. <laughs> you make me sound so mean. <laughs> was I really that mean? No, no, you weren't. It was just, it was funny because there was the only interaction I had with you yeah. while I was at Curlin. Uh -huh. And then you, and, and, and I kind of had a similar interaction with uh, Leah Brantner, a mutual yeah. friend of ours. Yeah. And, and then it was just, it was just so funny that all three of us end up at Yakota. Yeah. In 20, well, I got there in 2018. You got there. 19. Also, there, 2019. Yep. Um, and so we, we run into each other again, and neither of you remembered me at all from Kirtland, yeah. but I remember both of you. Um, but I, like, other than that, I'd heard nothing but great things about you um, coming out of D.C. And so then we get to fly together, and we start hanging out together, and we, we start doing the game nights thing, um, mm -hmm. get us together and a few others. And it was uh, it was one of those things where we just kind of, like, to me, we instantly kind of clicked. Like we, yeah. we knew each other well enough, uh, and it was like it was a great great start to our friendship, as far as I was concerned. Yeah. No. I. I couple of points here. Okay. First okay, of all, regarding Kirtland, to be clear, to set the stage, you were an initial qualification student with all of fifty hours to your name. Is that correct? Probably close to there, yeah. Yes. I was, at the time, a permanent party instructor with 2,500 hours. So if I wasn't extremely better than you, something was wrong. <laughs> so less, less the people look at you and think, well, this guy's no good, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, so I don't, I, you're correct. I don't remember flying with you that night. Um, um, but I for sure remember meeting you when I got to Kirtland. Um, it was kind of, or not Kirtland, uh, Yakota. It was kind of funny because I think maybe you were TDY like the first weekend I showed up or like you got, went TDY very quickly after that because I, I feel like I didn't talk, to, you weren't one of the very first people I talked to. Um, yeah. But uh, but I, I do remember people being like, oh yeah, Shady, he's super sarcastic. And I was like, mm, okay, well, we should get along great. <laughs> sure enough, we totally did. So uh, I think I can remember several occasions where either I would walk into your office or you would walk into my office at Yakota, and one or the other of us would be frustrated about any number of Air Force related shenanigans. And that I I realized we like developed a look where we would let, look at each other and be like, yeah, bro, I feel you. <laughs> So. <laughs> the amount of staff meetings that that look got shared in where it was just like, oh, they didn't just say that, did they? Like, they didn't just, like, say that out loud. 
<laughs> Shady and I were the people like looking at each other across the table. That's correct. We were the people looking at each other across the table in the staff meeting being like, hmm. Yeah, that happened. That really <laughs> happened. <Yep. laughs> yeah. Oh, good times. Good times. Um, but yeah, so um, uh, you mentioned the game nights. So um, for those of you who are, uh, for those of you who have not lived on a military base overseas, which is probably most of you, <laughs> um, but I don't know, not all of you, I'm sure. Um, Very niche audience. Uh, yeah, one of uh, one of the things that is super cool about an overseas assignment is that you get very tight with the people that you're stationed there with because, you know, that's that's who you work with, that's who you live next to, that's who you hang out with. And um, uh, Shady and uh, a couple of other people, our friend Leah that he already mentioned, and and a few others, already had like a standing uh, game night where it was once every couple weeks or something, um, and. We would uh, we would get together and we play board games and card games and um, sometimes like internet Jackbox games and and uh, it was just it was just a really good time and a really good excuse to get together and one of the things that I was super super grateful for when COVID hit because we were all sort of in our own bubble anyway there on the base and having the opportunity just to get together with friends and blow off steam and do such a normal activity was really like kind of a sanity saver for me. Um, so yeah, I was, I was very grateful that you guys welcomed uh, my family and me into, into that circle. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it was, it was really good. So we became, we became fast friends. Um, to, to say the least shady for those of you, uh, who were not at my retirement ceremony back in June was my master of ceremonies for my retirement ceremony. Um, and it was <laughs> by far the most unforgettable um, <laughs> retirement ceremony, not only because it was mine, but it was, it was sort of like a cross between a traditional retirement ceremony and like a no shit roast is really how it how it played out. Yeah. Um, well, you know, when you asked me, I, I, I warned you, I went, Hey, if you're going to ask me to do this. We are not doing this stuffy old fashioned, like, yeah. Oh, it's nice yeah. that you're out of the air force. Like, no, we are going to give your career the proper burial it deserved. <laughs> well, and it was funny too, because I remember you saying, okay, what, what are my boundaries? Like what's over the line? And I'm pretty sure I said, don't embarrass my family and don't insult my retiring officer. <laughs> and everything else is cool. <laughs> followed one of those rules. <laughs> you followed, yeah, you followed one of those rules really well. <laughs> my family remained unembarrassed. Ish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I protected the kids. <laughs> I did. You, did. you did a really good job. <laughs> I didn't let Easy off the hook, and I definitely didn't let Colonel Martin off the hook. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, but Colonel Martin was a great sport. It was it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And, and again, I mean, I know I've said it before, but thank you again for doing that. It was, it was a really good time. Um, so then how did you become a writer? Oh, that's a that's a story, I guess. Um, so I will tell you back and really, I guess this is more kind of for your audience, because I think I've told you this before. But when I was 16, 15 ish. Uh, I was driving with my dad down to his mom's house, uh, my mm -hmm. late grandmother. And we, for whatever reason, decided to start spitballing a, like a story in a world. Mm -hmm. And I still have those notes to this day. And it's something that I intend to tend to come back to. But so now we fast forward 16 ish years, 15 years later. Mm -hmm. Um, and as part of like our game night group, we had decided to start doing D and D, Dungeons and Dragons, for those who who don't know the acronym. But um, you know, between myself and James Stevens and you and Matt, um, you know, we had plenty of capable DMs, uh, dungeon mm -hmm. masters. And I decided to after we had done one of I think I think it was Delta Green we did with with you running yeah. it. I was like, yeah, well, the bird, the bird fingers. Yep, the bird fingers. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> and the blob. We had the to fight. Blob, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With fire. Uh, no, so we did that, and I was like, okay, that one was very heavily 
role play and intrigue based um, mm-hmm. with a little bit of action. And we managed to kind of make the action work, but that game is not supposed to be as action intense. And no, if so, you get into combat in Delta Green, you're already dead. Yeah. 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 And that's, and we, we had that the first time we ran it. Uh, yep. Where it, I think the whole party died because we ended up getting into combat. So it was, yeah, almost. Yeah. 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 Thanks, James. <laughs> yeah, way to go, James. Always. <laughs> Always James' fault. It, so well, it, it, it truly was at that point. He Leroy Jenkins the F out of the entire party at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm tired of waiting. <laughs> We've been talking too much. All right. James. Uh, no, but so I was like, all right, what if I take it? What if I take that idea, that concept, and I introduced a little bit of an intrigue aspect to the normal like rule set for Dungeons and Dragons? And then I had to come up with a kind of a world setting for it. And I went, well, I've got this like notebook full of notes and I, like the first chapter written. What if I do like a prologue or something? And I just take that world before it becomes the problem set that I have or the conflict that I have currently. I stick a couple players in it with a little bit of intrigue and I let them kind of roam around and see what happens. And so mm-hmm. that's when... I invited you guys all over. This is, I think this is right about when COVID hit too. Yeah, shortly. Um, is when we started it. And I created that world and really just like, I had made a bare bones script for it. Um, and I had ideas and adventures kind of built for it. But I let you guys fill it out for me. A lot of it, mm-hmm. to be honest. You know, it, it was very much a, all right, because I'm allowing this intrigue element, I have to be able to allow you to actually explore the world, which meant that I'm going to be doing a lot of, like, I'll, I'll kind of know what I need for each piece, but I'm going to have to do a lot of improvising. Yeah. And and it was it was fun. At least I enjoyed it. Uh, as far as I know, you guys had enjoyed it. Um, yeah. But I know uh, right about that point, uh, as we were finishing up that campaign, um, or that, I guess, really, this not even that, a campaign that was really just a mission set. Uh, yeah. I was getting ready to deploy to Singapore and I was going to have a bit of downtime on my hands. And then somebody, this person right over here, that person, <laughs> somebody, somebody went, Hey shady. Uh, I see that you can kind of, you know, story tell a bit and you can, you can, you can do this thing where you can imagine a world and, and the people in it, and you can make it into an intelligible, interesting story. So I have an idea for you. And I want you to write a short story based on a character out of one of my books. And then I want you to submit it to Chris Kennedy for me. <laughs> yep. And I'll, I'll tell you, I was a little bit, I was a little bit surprised. It was one of those, really? like, oh yeah. I you're honestly, like the fourth person I've I've bullied into a writing career, so I maybe I'm you not didn't surprised know that. that you did it. I'm not, <laughs> that I'm not surprised by. I, I was surprised <laughs> that I was asked to do it. Um, oh yeah, hmm. it, it's just I don't know. I, I've never really gone back to it. I, I had never really gotten back to it. Never thought yeah. about it too much. Like the like I said, I I carry the notebook that has those notes everywhere with me because I'm yeah. like trying to remind myself, like, hey, you have this thing, go write it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So, so here's, so here's me, right. I'm in Japan on the twilight, my twilight uh, um, assignment of my air force career, having a ball minus the whole COVID pandemic, not going anywhere thing, but making really good friends, having a great time doing this, um, uh, you know, doing playing in this, uh, in this intrigue, campaign that that you devised and I, one of the things that will always bug me is that we, we never really did get back to it um and i don't know that we really will be able to just because everyone has since moved and we're all so spread out and time zones are a pain in the ass and um but um you know i saw the way in which you created that world and the way in which you managed the characters even though we were literally not doing we were literally doing what we wanted because we were actually you know we're we were the character were being, were being manipulated by people other than you, um, and I just thought, I you know, I don't know. I just I thought you you I wanted to know more about the stories that were in in your brain um, because I really liked the one that you were telling in the game. Um, 
And so that's, that's really where, why I was like, Hey, I'm going to give you homework while you're deployed. <laughs> so, and what happened when you submitted the story? And it became my first published work. Yeah. It got accepted. Um, yeah. Got accepted in well. the anthology in the wings. Yeah. Um, story about Roanoke. Mm -hmm. uh, probably, you know, after, especially after taking the time to like go read through some of your, some of yours and Marisa's books and mm -hmm. getting to know like several of the characters, he's definitely become one of my favorite characters, not just because he got me the end, but uh, right. he, he just, he has that like intrigue mystique that yeah. just works. And I love yeah. it. He's a um, string puller, yes. uh, you know, kind of a puppet master type. Or if not puppet master, then a puppet submaster, puppet lieutenant <laughs> type. He, um, but yeah, uh, I I like him too, and and I thought that he would appeal to you, which is why I suggested that particular story. Um, um, but yeah, I I don't know, I just I had a feeling that uh, um, that you would be able to put together something that Chris liked, and and sure enough, I was right, as I often am. Go me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does help having you in my corner too, right? Because I, I immediately sent it to you. And so you could kind of give me the, the mentoring and the wisdom I needed to really mm -hmm. like start actually stepping up the game where it's not just, yeah. I'm not just writing, you know, a D and D campaign that I can kind of get away with fudging a little bit because it's, yeah. you know, I, I can change things on the fly and it's just a group of my friends. Now we're actually looking at like this professional side of it. Um, right. And so having you there to help me out and back me up, definitely, you know, I I don't know if I would have been able to get past that first threshold if I didn't have you in my corner. So I think eventually you would have, but it may have taken you longer. Um, the the and this is I think this is true of all of us, right? Because I've certainly benefited from that sort of like mentorship. Uh, relationship with several people, right? Um, you know, John Ringo, um, Mike Williamson, Tom Kratman, um, you know, Tony Weisskopf herself, uh, you know, when she edited um, Gunpowder and sent me edits on a couple of other things that I've sent to her. Um, mm -hmm. You know, being able to work with someone who has more experience than you in this industry, just like in aviation, um, you know, is, is, of course, hugely beneficial. And, you know, you and I, um, you know, I've had this conversation before when you've, you've expressed gratitude and I, and I mean, my pleasure, I'm happy. Like, I'm happy to do that because that is my, that is my payment to those who provided me with that wisdom. Just as when you find someone that you're like, dude, I know this person has incredible stories to tell and I want to read them. So I'm going to bully them into writing <laughs> and, and you're able to then, and you know what I mean? And then you're able yeah. to then um, you know, provide that that same sort of uh, perspective for them too. So, and and the cycle of life continues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, a little bit on that note. So it, it was funny because uh, I was talking with Mark Stallings, who mm -hmm. you had introduced me to when I moved to Colorado, which we can go through that story later. But starting with him last night, and he said something something that I kind of really bought into, which is, you know, everybody who's writing right now needs the up and comers and everybody who's already been writing needs those kind of like the middle ones who are really starting to take, take care of their own because you just can't, you know, there, there's a huge market out there. People love stories still, right? Mm -hmm. They love books. They love movies, all different kinds of content. You need people to help produce content. Like it, mm -hmm. as sometimes it feels like we're in this competition, right? Where you want to, you want your book to do well, but, you're really kind of in a, in a solo competition in that much. Like your book should be able to do well on its own. You're really not trying to compete too much with each other, but you need those other people to produce stories. So that way, uh, one, you know, if you have these writer friends that you can kind of, you know, get people like your fans that are listening to this right now, like, Hey, go check this guy out. Here's some content. Mm -hmm. Like here's really good stuff and you'll mm -hmm. enjoy this too. And then you can come back for when I've got the next thing ready for you. Mm -hmm. you know and and yeah. that's a really good not not just a business model to me but that's that's a good um almost like team spirit that we have to have yeah right you're you're absolutely right and it's one of the things that i love the most about the community that i have managed to 
uh, find myself in um, with regard to writing, right? So, so um, you know, I, I publish traditionally with, uh, with Bain Books. I publish um, on the indie side with Chris Kennedy Publishing. Um, and I don't do any... Well, I've I've self-published only short stories at this point, but you know there may be self-publishing ventures in my future as well, with all of my copious amounts of spare time. <laughs> um, but uh, um, but but the point is that all of these communities, um, I feel very fortunate because um, the you know there's there's a saying that everybody uses, um, and it's it's very popular among the twenty books to fifty k crowd, um, but it's very popular among the CKP writers as well. And that is that, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats, right? Um, and <clears throat> I found that very much to be true because, you know, while, um, you know, while other authors are like absolutely killing it over, you know, publishing books through Chris and I am, you know, st I don't have anything to release yet because I've been working on it or, you know, whatever else. Um, them the fact that they're publishing things that gives me something to talk about, to connect with my fans over, allows me to continue building my fan base, right? So on on that very simplistic, very mercenary level, it's good for me that the the community with which I'm associated continues to grow uh, because it allows me to grow my own fan community, which then allows me more people to say, hey, I do have a finished workout. It's out. Go get it. You know, go go pay your hard and earned entertainment money to read my work um, and tell all your friends about it. Um, so on that level, it's 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 good for me, but it's also good too, just for all of the all the other reasons that you mentioned. You know, just that that like there's camaraderie, there's people to talk to, there's people to send your manuscripts to. You know, the only people that really that I that I send to do beta reads for me anymore are. Or other authors that that work for that write for Bain and write for CKP, <laughs> you know, because I know because I know their work and I know that they that they know um, they know what constitutes a good beta read and that um, and that they'll be able to give me feedback that is useful. You know what I mean? So yeah, and the, and you know you kind of touched on it a little bit like the CKP thing the like chris kennedy publishing group right mm -hmm. um at the time we'd lived in japan so the only person i'd ever met in person was you and recently i've gotten to meet a lot more of them which has been great but the the thing that really stands out to me is how close everybody is in that yeah in that kind of circle okay. right and how yeah. how willing we are to kind of reach out and help each other you know where you can when and where you can and make things happen um and so that like you know, even even just beyond the uplifting each other as a writer, like that's that's a big thing, and yeah. that really like if I had showed up and it was cutthroat and people hated each other and you know you're having to play politics, I'd have, I'd have ducked out to be honest. Yeah. Like yeah. I'd go to some yeah, yeah, and move on. Yeah, I got enough of that at work. I don't I don't need any more of that crap. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that's been really nice as that, you know, just, you know, one more reason where I can like sing your praise for bringing me into that group. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's been, it's been a good experience so far. Uh, you know, currently the only, the only two works I have published and possibly a third one come under the CKP banner. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's really, uh, that's kind of all I've known, but then, um, still starting to like i'm still kind of stumbling out there trying to find find out what else you know because you you did uh 20 books this year and mm -hmm. i know a lot of people sing its praises a lot and i i fully mm -hmm. intend to go try and do that one um yeah. for for this reason so yeah it's a it's a it's a good convention um i think that it fits a lot of the same niche that superstars does but whereas superstars is smaller and more intimate from from what I'm told, twenty books is ginormous. So um, so that's that's definitely something. Maybe um, that you know uh, that'd be an interesting that'd be an interesting video too. Like kind of comparing the getting a couple people who've done both and, and getting, yeah. getting them together to talk about the, the two different videos or the two different conferences. So, um, but speaking of superstars, you just got back, right? Yeah, we finished up a week ago Sunday. 
Okay, so for those of you who are not familiar, Superstars Writing Seminar is a um, it's a week long. Is that right? It's uh, Wednesday, it's Wednesday to Sun Saturday, technically. Okay, um, all right, and then it's Sunday like is like week, a cleanup yes. day. Yeah, yeah, a very very long week. Yeah, um, but it's a it's a writers conference that is held in Colorado every year, um, and uh, and it is its stated intent is to focus on the craft and business of writing. Um, I've never been, and I'm super curious, but um, one of the reasons that I specifically invited Shady to come and talk on this video is because I really am interested in his perspective because this was your first time, right? And was, not only your first time, but this was your first writer's conference as a professional writer, correct? Also true. Awesome, awesome. So with that in, with that in mind, tell us why, why Superstars? Why did you choose this one to make your, um, make your debut as it were? Uh, it definitely helped. It was local. Oh. <laughs> definitely helped. Uh, it because I it was like fifteen minutes down the road for me, so I could sleep okay, yeah. every night. Um, proximity, sure. Yeah, proximity is great. Uh, but no, it, you had introduced me to uh, when you'd come out for training uh, to Denver mm -hmm. back in I think August September. You'd introduced me to Maya and Matt and Mark and a few others, I think, but I can't remember. Yeah. Um, and we, one of the things that Maya had talked with me about is doing superstars. And she's like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, there are, I know like you guys just PCS'd back into the States, uh, for those of you military permanent change of station. Um, and coming back to the US after COVID was probably the most expensive thing I've ever done. Uh, <laughs> just having a, yeah. There, there was a lot of things we hadn't planned on. Like we had sold both our cars because they were old when we left for Japan, mm -hmm. thinking like, oh, you know, it won't be too bad. Used cars, we, we can buy a couple of used cars when we get back, it'll be fine. But as everybody's well aware, prices yeah. like for everything skyrocketed. Yeah. Um, we were getting into the housing market when we came back. We were trying to get cars. Uh, so there was a we racked up a little bit more debt than I'm used to racking up trying to trying to move under the military bank. Yeah. Yeah, just trying um, to live, right? Yeah, just just trying to like get a lifestyle back in the U.S. after yeah. comfortably living in Tokyo and on the military base for a while. That's right. That's right. Um, <laughs> but so so it was one of those things where she she came to me and she goes, "Hey, superstars," and, and it does have a high a little bit of a high buy-in. Um, I think for me as an active duty military guy, it, just to just to get entry to the conference was about seven hundred dollars. Um, but there's kind of a purpose to that. One, there's a lot going on. They have a lot of professionals coming in to talk to you and a lot of bills to pay. And it's a very unique conference. Um, but two, it does kind of, it does kind of crowd control. Um, one of the things that I found unique about Superstars was that there are not there was not near as many people there as I assumed that there was going to be. And they're even they they are going to cap the uh, the registrations this year yeah um, i saw that yeah so that's that's news and they announced that at the end of the conference but uh because it was like kind of expensive maya had kind of pulled me aside and said hey if you need to apply for a scholarship you're a new enough writer you would fit you'd qualify under the umbrella you may not get chosen but at least you can apply mm -hmm. and so i did and then i started looking at like uh and i looked at what they were presenting and who was going to be there and you know, they had reps from Bain Books, uh, mainly Dave Butler, mm -hmm. um, under the under the name DJ Butler is where he's normally published. Um, yeah. They originally had Jim Butcher on, a really big kind of inspiration on my life, as far as like all the things that I've read from him. And yeah. if if there was anybody that I would almost like to stylize after when it comes to writing, it's him. Yeah. Um, and they had Kevin Anderson, um, and he was so. I believe we were. Uh, he was one of the kind of founding members of it, and he's also mm -hmm. very big in publishing and has his own works, um, along with his wife Rebecca Mesta. I believe is how she pronounces mm -hmm. her last name. Mm -hmm. um, and then Brandon Sanderson. Uh, he's a big name that usually he didn't show, didn't go this year. Uh, but yeah. you have all these names. Um, uh, Eric Flint, 
unfortunately, one of the founders who passed away this last year. Uh, but yeah. they're, they're names I recognize in the industry. They're names I recognize for their particular mm-hmm. way of the craft. And it was, to me, it was kind of a, a no brainer. Like this, if I want to actually like be serious about this, I want to get good at this, I'm going to go. And so even though I ended up mm-hmm. not getting one of the scholarships, uh, I ended up going anyway. And, and I yeah. <laughs> sort of panicked about mid-December when I realized I hadn't heard anything. And Maya had warned me like, oh, yeah, when when they when you don't get a scholarship, they'll tell you, hey, you should go register now and you can register on the old codes. Hadn't heard anything. So I panicked, yeah. texted Maya. And I'm like, Maya, what's going on? It's just like, oh, yeah, they announced scholarships like two months ago. You should really, <laughs> you should really register, thankfully. <laughs> At a spot for me. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. But, um, yeah, so that was kind of really how, how I got interested. And yeah. it, it was a lot of, like, I don't, if I'm going to do something, I don't want to half-ass it. I'm going to go, yeah. I'm going to go full, full throttle, full beans. Yeah, yeah Shady uh, always full-asses things. Yeah, always. <laughs> never fails. Yeah, that's, uh. That that checks. That checks with what I know from from flying with you. You know, like your your flying style as well. So, um, yeah. Um, well, cool. All right. So so that's why you went um, and and sort of the expectation that you had. You know, when when you went in there, did you did you? Let me ask you this: Did you show up at Superstars kind of with a particular goal or objective in mind, or were you just sort of trying to get your bearings? Uh, I thought I went in with a goal in mind and then mm-hmm. I showed up and realized I had no idea what I was doing. So I just kind of sat and talked with people to start. Um, and to be honest, uh, and you, you and I have talked about this on, on different facets of our jobs, you know, whether yeah. we're talking about like the air force conferences or T wise or something, but we all know that a lot of the like, kind of the business, the the networking that needs to take place doesn't take place in a lot of the classrooms. It takes place in the in-betweens when you just kind of run into people and you, you know, yeah. you kind of get to know each other. Um, and so I showed up fully, like I had my phone with a full schedule on it. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to go to this class. I'm going to go to this class. Yeah. I'm going to go to this class. That didn't pay, play out at all. I went uh, and I did the first, the, so the, the Wednesday is typically... They, they've started this kind of newer thing called craft day uh-huh. and it's, it costs extra to its end. Um, but you get a little bit smaller groups and you get a very focused, you get a lot of very focused stuff. Uh, and so the very first class I went to, um, was Kevin Anderson and Rebecca's, uh, world building class. And they discussed oh, the in depth of characters and yeah. all the different, like, all the different things about a world that you really kind of need to lay out, at least kind of the bare bones kit of it. So you yeah. know what you're working with as you write. Yeah. Um, not all of it has to come in. Like you never have to expressly state all of these things that you come up with. It's more of just a, this is what's going to influence a lot of the character choices. Yeah. Um, and so if you know those things, it makes it a little easier to, to kind of really build your story. And it was, it was a great lesson and I like I was hanging on everywhere that morning. But yeah. at the same time it was nice to kind of get to understand like having now published with the In the Wings anthology and then you and I put together a um a pair of intertwined stories for Talons and mm-hmm. Talismans one under New Myth Press. Mm-hmm. Um it was nice to see that kind of play out. A lot of the stuff that you and I did back and forth you know, figuring out a lot of things that even though they didn't come into those stories, it's like, yeah, no, this is how they have to be influenced. And so, so yeah. it's kind of almost validation in many ways yeah. that I was on the right path and then yeah. learning where they were really taking it. So I knew how to step my game up. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that, that's, I love learning those types of lessons. That's kind of how I feel about, um, <clears throat> once I started really digging into like methods of story, story structure and story plot and things of that nature. Cause I'd always been, I had, I kind of thought I was a pantser, but I would get to a point in the story and I would get stuck. And then I was like, well, if I just figure out ahead of time, like the major beats, then I won't get stuck. And, and then once I started doing that, 
Um, and then I, I had a very similar experience. I went to, I don't even remember what it was. It might've even been a video. It might've been a YouTube video. Um, it was probably a Sarah Cannon video because I'm obsessed with her, but um, it was about like the mechanics of plotting out a story. And it, a lot of it I was doing intuitively, but the parts that I wasn't doing intuitively, it was like, oh, okay, cool. And then having that knowledge and putting it together with what I was doing intuitively just really allowed me to like level up my game, you know? Um, so, um, so I think that you will probably find that that's the case with your world building, having had an experience like that. I would expect so anyway. Yeah. 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 And it, it's funny because the, I had that almost a very similar revelation at a class like the next day. I went to Mallory Cooper's discussion on like keywords and covers and yeah. uh, essentially how to grab a reader. It was really how to brand like, your book. Yep. And yeah. she did an excellent job of hitting all the major beats on it. And it, it, again, it was just another one of those things where it's like intuitively, like, yeah that makes sense especially as an avid reader myself it's like yeah i definitely understand how that gets me now like yeah. i look at books and i go yep no that's my book no that's not my book I was a, you know as i'm passing through the through the non-fiction section uh, it's a, uh, i'll just skip to the fiction thanks but <laughs> you know it's rolls yeah right it's yeah. uh but it was interesting because you, you know she pretty much voiced everything that you kind of kind of knew mm -hmm. and, and if you hadn't thought about it now you're thinking about it and it's like that makes sense yeah um so so it was nice to have those classes too and then again then they'll add that extra layer on top because they do like they are good at what they do and so now yeah. it's like okay how do i go from just being the kind of almost the smart mark where yeah no i get how it works so i just don't know how to do it to all right now how do i do it and step it up a bit yeah 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 how do i be the one pulling people in that's right yeah. that's right that's awesome um so what would you say what well so sh shit that's only the first day that we've talked about um what other what other experiences stood out to you uh for for the rest of the weekend at, at Superstars, you mentioned you started to talk about this, and it's funny because while you were talking about the sort of the unofficial gatherings that happen at these types of conferences, where like the real business is done not in the classroom, but it's done in between, and you know, it's funny to me because we have a we have a legit word for it in the science fiction fan and, and science fiction and fantasy community, and probably other writing communities use it as well. And it's barcon, right? So, um, I'm I'm curious, how much time and energy did you spend at barcon on uh, at Stars? I spent a lot more energy at barcon than I thought I was originally going to, and a lot. And was it worth it? Oh yeah, absolutely, every minute. Yeah. Um, and for me, it was funny because, uh, and I'll tell you, the first lesson I learned at, at Superstars wasn't in Kevin and Rebecca's class. It uh -huh. was prior to them kicking off the day, I showed up a little early to, to kind of get a feel for the room, get a feel for the space, like start under, you know, because mm -hmm. I had the only person I had ever dealt with at that point was you. I dealt mm -hmm. with Chris Kennedy a little bit by email. I dealt, you know, Rob Howell and I had had a couple of video chats to discuss edits and some, you know, how to level up the writing stuff. But other than that, you know, other than, you know, a couple texts here and there with some of the, some of the people that you knew, I didn't have a lot of, um, I didn't really have a foot in the door in that yeah. world. So I showed up early thinking, okay, let me, let me get a feel for how this is going to run. Cause I, I don't know what's, I don't know what the, the spirit of superstars is. And they talk about tribe culture. And this will play mm -hmm. a lot into into the bar con thing. And, and I hear it a lot where it's like, you know, you're going to come, you're going to be new family. And I will tell you that overall Superstars, I think, does it far better than any other convention conference I've ever been to. Really? Um, yeah. But so the first person I end up meeting, um, well, so I ran into Maya at the registration desk. And, and then I met Haley uh, H.Y. Gregor. Haley Gregor, Young. Young. Yeah, I Haley adore Gregor. her, by the way. <laughs> yeah, she's great. Um, yeah. I am going to get uh, her on this channel. She doesn't want to be, but I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> she will flip. She will absolutely flip when you ask her. I know she will. I know, and I just realized as, as those words came out of my mouth, like, that sounds kind of creepy. But... <laughs> A little bit. Uh, yeah. 
So I, I am going to persuade her to consensually appear on my channel at some point. That is my goal. I, I want your audience to know that this is how she does it. This is how she bullies us into doing these things and makes us successful. It's that. You that make yourself she starts with that and she goes, oh, I'm going to be nice about it, though. <laughs> more flies with honey, my dear. Always more flies with honey. <laughs> exactly. But no, so I met Haley and then um, Kevin Eikenberry happened to be sitting in mm. his seat. And I hadn't met him yet, but I recognized the name. And yeah. he and I had chatted a little bit after I'd moved to Colorado because he's on some of the same uh, kind of writer texts that we have. Uh, and I had met some of the other guys that he knows pretty well. And then of course, having you as a reference always like makes me look that much better. So it's real easy for me. Um, <laughs> but I went up and introduced myself to Ike and he was the like the coolest guy. He's super cool. Um, and so we stood there and chatted for a good 10, 15 minutes. And, you know, it immediately made it a whole lot easier to go through the rest of superstars. Yeah. And then, so coming back to where that plays into Barcon. So I, so I got to talk with him and then I ended up having lunch with him that day uh, along with a few other people. Um, and so I got to get to know him a little bit better. And then, you know, one of the things we, we discussed and I knew better kind of going into these conferences, it's like, yeah, no, you, you get the business done when you get to have drinks, you get to chill out and you get to just talk. And mm -hmm. sometimes they go to business and sometimes it just stays, you know, like getting to know each other, that kind of thing. And that's fine. Both of them are, both of them help um, yeah. because it, it, you start building that rapport with each other and then you can, you know wh who you can trust and where, you know, what you can trust them with, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so Barcon that night, we get done with classes and we immediately, we go out for dinner, um, skirted heifer. I think it was what I went out to do. And that was where, uh, on our way out of class that day was where I met Casey Moores. Yes. Um, Boy we Casey. affectionately know as Moops. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was the first time he and I had gotten to meet in, in real time in person. Um, he's another one that I bullied into this. Yep. But to be fair, I didn't have to push him hard. He was like a breath away. And I was like, bro, there you go. You know, go yeah. fly. <laughs> just, yeah. just go yeah. do that. Go do the thing you were doing during your career and just fly. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, he, and it's funny too, because so, so I claim credit for bullying him. And then he claims credit for bullying in um, uh, Melissa Althoff. And uh, so I was like, cool. That makes me like her grandmother. <laughs> I'm her writer grandmother. That's right. <laughs> I met Melissa that night. Yeah. Same, at the at the kind of the same outset there. But we all started at the bar. We had a couple drinks. We went out for dinner. Came back and immediately I got uh, I got drawn into another conversation with Eikenberry. And Ike, I I don't know how he did it. Like I did I didn't see it coming. And uh, we we were. We just ordered a couple drinks and he goes, Hey, I got to run. However, I want you to sit here and talk with Chuck Gannon. And he drops Chuck Gannon in my lap and I go. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're familiar with Chuck's work then. I am. Yeah. I, and a lot of it, uh, part, part of it definitely through you, but I, I, I knew who he was prior to that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so Isn't I knew like, Oh yeah. I knew I was getting dropped in the deep end a little bit, but yeah. I, I knew well enough to know that like he immediately, you know, was such a, another like real cool guy. Yeah. Like, and we, uh, we started talking, writing like just off the cuff and he put me at ease and it was really, it was a really cool experience. And I came back and we spent another like hour, two hours talking the kind of some of the finer points of writing. And then mm -hmm. of course, because we've all got the military mindset, you know, we, we switched over to some of like the geopolitics and intrigue that you can introduce into fantasy and, and mm -hmm. sci-fi. And, um, and it, it was kind of like at that point that night. Uh, and, and I tell people that my favorite part of superstars, my favorite moment mm -hmm. is that moment where I got to, like, I just got to really like BS and talk with, I can chuck. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, for the rest of the conference, like I could always like just go say hey to him, you know, or, you know, sh 
we started playing jokes on Ike throughout the conference. Like that just became the thing that the CKP yeah. authors did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was, it was cool. And then I also got to, got a chance to actually go sit in their classes and learn what they're professionally teaching too. Yeah. And knowing like who's on the backside of that professional class really helps like some of those lessons sink in. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Ike's been doing his um, seven point story structure presentations at Superstars for a number of years now. And I, I know that they are incredibly popular. Um, and uh, um, he pro I think he also did like some character stuff this year too, didn't he? Yes. Um, so I didn't get to sit in on the seven point story structure because yeah. it happened to be during Kevin and Rebecca's presentation. Yeah. Um, and I had to make a choice and, yeah. and I just met Ike and I'm like, he, yeah. I'm like, I know he's teaching that class again. So I will like, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely find a time, find time to sit in on it. Um, yeah. but he then ended up doing a, he did a fill in, uh, on villain creation. And how to Ooh. how to make your villain like step up your villains and yeah. i i mean you know me i love a great villain like that's Same. favorite part of the story of any any kind of content movie tv series otherwise but um, yeah and then he taught emotional resonance too mm, which that's good. i didn't get in on that class it was full yeah for good reason yeah that's my that's my jam too and i mean yeah you know, um, and those of you who've read my books know that my my entire goal is to um, is that gut the gut punch moment, right? That's the that's that's yeah. when it's yeah. So, well, that's awesome, man. I'm I'm really glad that you that you had the opportunity to do that. Um, what would you say? Okay, so give us not to put you on the spot, but I'm totally going to put you on the spot. What what would you say was like the funniest moment that you had at Superstars? Um. Hmm. There was. I mean, there there was a couple of really funny moments. Yeah. Uh, one of them. So at the end, uh, I think it was James James Artemis Owen and oh, he's awesome. Uh, Mark. Um. Oh, I can't remember his name, but he's a Canadian publisher, and he helped. He was hosting this mm. year. Um. And I'll have to, I'll just send you that name, but they apparently owed a, uh, they owed a dance and song routine for a certain, uh, either charity event uh -huh. or like a certain Kickstarter passing a, a amount of money mark. And they <laughs> dressed up as the blues brothers and came out <laughs> and did an original, did an original song dressed up as the blues brothers. Um, That's amazing. and it was, absolutely amazing it was oh, really goodness. well done and i love the fact that like they they absolutely went for it on it that's so, awesome that's yeah, really, really cool. cool to see yeah um, but really funny moment uh anytime i was listening to <laughs> there, there was a there was a moment dave butler forgot that he was being recorded uh <laughs> for a class yeah and he started to say like some not so nice things about <laughs> about like uh, it, it wasn't even like it, it was ch tongue in cheek, but it was yeah, one of those okay. things where he's like, you know, agents are a necessary evil kind of thing. And <laughs> he goes, oh, this is being recorded for, for broadcast, isn't it? Agents are a good thing to have when you need them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I like the style. Yeah, I yeah. Like we, uh, Marisa Wolf and I were talking when we did our, our MarsCon uh, after action on this channel. I'll link the video below. Um, uh, one of our favorite moments inv also involved Dave Butler, where we were doing the um, swearing in sci-fi panel. And Dave Butler, who, um, no, that's not to say that he, he won't drop the occasional the occasional f bomb when when it's you know perfectly timed and 100% called for. Um, but he's he's you know, very publicly a uh, member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And, and that's just not part of his repertoire. Um, and But he moderated the swearing and sci-fi panel. And it was amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. It was it was very cool. He's I. It's so funny because you're talking about all these people, and it, like the whole time I want to be like, oh, I love her. Oh, I love him. Oh, they're my favorite. Oh, I love that guy. You know. 
So. <laughs> well, it's funny because you, and then having met Marisa at the conference and then gotten to talk to her oh, a little yeah. bit, like you had sold me on Dave by getting me into witchy eye. And yeah. so I got through everything that he's got out on it so far and I absolutely loved it. Yeah. And then I got to eat. So we, so they do a VIP dinner where you get to kind of sit with some of the, the bigger names if you haven't mm -hmm. gotten a chance to meet him yet. And I got to sit with Dave at dinner and he is just such a down to earth dude. He and really like is. you, yeah, you, you had told me about him, you know, you, I'd read his work. Marisa had told me, Maya had told me like everybody yeah. had given him a good reputation. And I like, I'm, and, and thankfully I took, took my wife, Stephanie with me to, to that dinner because he was absolutely like, it was a great time to have, to get yeah. to have dinner with him and get to talk with him and pick his brain a little bit. Um, and think, actually, uh, I'll tell you, I absolutely sang your praises at that table <laughs> that night because he, he had asked me a very similar question to what you asked, which was, you know, how did you get into this? Yeah. And I'm like, well, let me start by telling you I have this very forceful friend who you know <laughs> called Casey <laughs> Azell. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Well, I, I mean, thank you, I guess, for being saying nice things about me. But <laughs> did he laugh when you when you characterized me as a, a very forceful friend? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, he yeah. knew exactly what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, sometimes I get what I want. So. Um, <laughs> so how did Steph enjoy the uh, the video or the video, the uh, VIP dinner? Uh, for the most part, she enjoyed it. We had a good. very, a very good table, uh, and of yeah. course, with Dave at the, at the, as the host of the table, right. um, it was real easy for her to relax. <laughs> the only kind of the negative thing was that because I was gone all week, she was a little bit tired from having to pick up yeah. all my slack, and then yeah. it got a little cold because uh, we were near one of the windows and it just wasn't it wasn't really keeping heat well, and like the yeah. whole table had started putting on their coats. So, <laughs> other than that. <laughs> I, I think she enjoyed the dinner. But, good, 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 good. Yeah. So are you going back? Yeah. Um, right now, so I did register again. Good. Uh, there's a lot there. Uh, like yeah. I got, I went to almost as many classes as I could like mentally handle. It's a lot like pilot training was where yeah. you're just drinking out of a fire hose and you're hoping to pick up half of what you've been blessed yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you have those moments where you're like, I'm just going to write this shit down. I don't even know what words are going on the page. I will read it and digest it later, but I just have to get it down now. Saturday's classes were a lot like that for me. Yeah. <laughs> so by that time, you know, we had done bark on Wednesday night, bark on Thursday night, full days of classes, did a full day of class Friday, had the VIP dinner. Yeah. I took Friday night off because I, ju I just couldn't. I yeah. had, like, had to, had to take, it, take a moment to just breathe. Yeah. Went back Saturday and realized like I was just almost brain dead. So there's uh there's a whole couple pages of notes from Saturday that I still have to go back there and make sense of. Hopefully <laughs> Sleepy Dave figured out how to write notes because <laughs> awake Dave has never learned how to take notes properly. It'll be like those notebooks that we had at Usafa <laughs> where you're writing and then the line just like dribbles down. The page. <laughs> yep. That's fully what I'm expecting. It's just the and there might be a little bit of a drool spot on one of the pages too <laughs> where I just like blanked out. <laughs> did you did you go stand up and stand in the back of the class? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I was like, I'm I'm not gonna put myself through that. I'm not calling myself out. I'll just let them call me out if I if I'm actually <laughs> passed out. <laughs> I mean, it is Saturday. To be fair, that was probably yeah. you probably weren't the only one. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Oh man. Well, um, okay. So, kind of uh, last question, I guess. So you're going back next year. Who do you think should should who should go to superstars? Who should invest the money? Who's it? Who is their like perfect audience? Their perfect audience is really just a range. And so I yeah. kind of touched on it earlier, but it's how the masters kind of take it on themselves. And I saw like, I saw Chuck go in and sit in on a couple of classes. I saw yeah. Kevin J. Anderson do it. Uh, James Owen did it. Mm -hmm. Kevin Eikenberry, like, He's really good at instructing. It's it's what he does for a living. But he was sitting in on different classes. Like they're all trying to get better, and yeah. so it's a good it's a good thing um, for people who want to get that different perspective and who have a writing career going. But it's yeah. also one of those things where if you're kind of at that beginner stage and 
you may or may not have like a foot in the door, it's a good way to get a foot in the door. Now, like I sure. said, the price point the price point will drive a few people away. But if you yeah. have the ability to to spend to go, um, one, if you go and it's not your thing, probably writing is is not as much of your thing either because that that's the that's how the world's working right now. Yeah. Um, and there, there's a lot of they did a lot of classes on like how traditional publishing and e-publishing and stuff has kind of evolved with the times. Um, but the, this networking of writers, that's how we kind of have to work moving forward for now. Yeah. Um, and, and not to discourage anybody who can't go that you shouldn't write, right? right? This is like, absolutely. If you've got a story to tell, write it down. Yeah. Going to this will get that, give you the ability to network with people who can find unique ways um, to publish a story. And, and you, you might know this a little bit and should probably talk about it too, but uh, I know Haley had, has written like five or six books and she shopped them around a bit, but getting, you know, for her going to superstars and, and she and I had talked about it, uh, it got her foot in the door with some people who would actually like, who can find a, a way to sell the, the story she writes. Yeah. Um, and that's a very unique thing that you don't have really anywhere else. And we have yeah. such a small um, community there that you get that FaceTime that's kind of necessary to really get to know people and find where you fit. Yeah. So what you're describing to me <clears throat> sounds a lot like what people say and what I myself have said about attendance at Liberty Con, honestly. Although Liberty Con is a different animal. Liberty Con is expressly a fan convention versus a writer's conference. So you're not going to get the, you know, the classes taught by Kevin Anderson or by, um, you know, Kevin Eikenberry or um, Chuck Gannon, you, but you're going to get the chance. It's so pro heavy. And again, it's, it's deliberately kept small um, that you're, you're going to get that opportunity, the other half of it, the opportunity to just sit and hang out with, um, you know, with, with, people who have that kind of knowledge to share just in, just in a less formal manner, I guess. Um, yeah. So that's interesting. That's an interesting comparison. Um, are you, are you coming to Liberty Con? Not currently. Okay. All right. I, we, we've, I've talked about it with some people yeah. who think it would be good if I went, but I yeah. don't have a pass currently. Yeah. So yeah. And it sells out. It's already yeah. sold out. Um, yeah. But also, summertime is my busiest time here at my actual yeah. job. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It, and we're we're going to be stressed to the limit this summer. So, yeah. if I can get the time yeah. off, and th th a lot of things have to fall into place all at once for me to go. Sure, sure. Maybe, maybe eyes on twenty four then, because it, I think it would be interesting to see your perspective if you went to if you go to superstars next year and then go to Liberty con next year and kind of yeah. compare the two, I think that'd be, I think that'd be an interesting comparison. So. And Stallings is trying to get me out to 20 books, Vegas as well. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody, everybody in the CKP circle is trying to get me out to factory con. Yeah. Factory con's a good time. Steph might even enjoy factory con. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, Shady, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this is, it's always great to talk to you, man. I miss you so much. Um, but thanks for coming on the channel and uh, letting my, my audience get to know you a little bit and hear about your experience at Superstars. Um, tell people where they can find you and where they can find your work. Uh, so right now you can find me at www.davidshadoin.com. Um, that's my current website. It's very bare bones, but it'll show you what I got. Link in the description. Um, yeah, and then you can find me on Instagram, and I want to say my handle is shadow68333. Um, find me on Twitter under the same, although that's kind of just a new spin-up, so there's not a lot there under Twitter yet. Yeah, um, yeah and that's kind of the major places you can find me right now if you don't go to Chris, uh, unless you go to Chris Kennedy Publishing and find my short stories published in a couple of those books. So which ones? Uh, so In the Wings, an anthology about the Four Horsemen universe of mm -hmm. side characters, and then Talons and Talismans 1 uh, alongside yourself um, yep. with our 
our blend or our uh, intertwined uh, Beauty and the Beast gender bender stories that I right. absolutely freaking love. I love those so stories. So much fun to write. I can't um, wait to get back to that world with you. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and I'm I'm so excited to produce more content under under that particular yeah. banner. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's where I'm at currently. Uh, you can find me on Facebook as well. Um, and then if you have any queries on my website, you can hit me up there, hit me up with questions. It, it pings me direct. Um, and then hopefully someday soon, I'll actually become a real pro and stop being an amateur and have a newsletter and, and some <laughs> blogs that'll go out. Um, but thank you for having me. I absolutely, I love talking to you. I'm so glad I got to see you. I know, I know I just saw you maybe a couple weeks ago, but it's always digital. So it's, yeah, it's been great getting to see you again and getting to talk to you and catch back up. So, yeah, yeah. We need to, we need maybe not record it every time, but we need to do this more often. So, um, Definitely. all right, cool. Well, if you liked this video, um, please give me that Chuck Yeager thumbs up and, uh, um, if you're not subscribed, I would love to have you uh, join our little party here. Um, next week, we will not have a Monday Madness because I am working on Monday night again. <laughs> so, um, um, but uh, sorry, next, what's that? So I know that feel. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, got to pay the bills, right? Um but uh, so our next Monday Madness will be at the beginning of March um, for a Monday live stream. So that should be a good time. Um, so stay tuned to the socials for that. And uh, once again, thank you to my guest, David Shady Shadoin. Um, so great to see you. Um, give my love to Steph and, and the pups. And um, I'm Casey Zell, and this is my writer life. We'll see you guys. Oops, where'd my mouse go? Okay. <laughs>